Okay, sometimes obtaining the gene by cutting the chromosomes may be impossible. What I mean by that is, it is not convenient to use restriction endonucleases. Why? Sometimes no restriction endonucleases are suitable. For example, the endonuclease can only cut the chromosome very far apart. So you will get the fragment, but the fragment of DNA may be too large. Right? So we want it to be as small as possible. Sometimes the restriction endonuclease that you use may actually cut the gene directly. So if it cuts the gene directly, that is also a problem as well. Because if you cut the gene into half, the gene is no longer functional. You want to be able to cut just slightly above the gene and just slightly below the gene. In some situations, no restriction endonucleases are suitable at all. There is also another problem, especially when we are talking about eukaryotic chromosomes. Now, in the eukaryotic chromosome, chapter 6, I told you that for eukaryotes, the genes will contain something known as introns, which are just the interrupting sequences. So if you are able, if you are able to cut the gene directly from the chromosome using the enzyme, Yes, you may get the gene, but you will also get the introns together, and we don't want the introns. So we have a problem. Sometimes you may not be able to cut the chromosome optimally. Sometimes you will cut the chromosomes optimally and get the gene, but the gene has a lot of introns, and introns will interrupt your gene expression. So the question here is, how do we solve this problem then? I want a gene, but I also want the gene to not have introns. To solve this problem over here, we have to go through a bit of revision. You see, under normal circumstances, in chapter 6 we studied that, when the gene with intron undergoes transcription, it produces the transcript or the pre-mRNA, and the pre-mRNA also has the introns as well, which I've highlighted in green. Now, in chapter 6, you studied that the introns will be removed and the exons, which are just the blue color parts, will be spliced together to get the mRNA with no exons. Now, you have an mRNA with no exons, but mRNA is RNA. I want a gene with no exons. How do we solve this problem then? This is where scientists use the second way to obtain genes from organisms. So, as you can see here, that's happening inside the cell of the organism. The gene is expressed, you know, it produces the pre-mRNA, the mRNA, the introns are removed and the exons are spliced to produce mRNA with no exons. I've just made it smaller. What scientists do in this case over here is they extract the mRNA. Now, you might be thinking, I don't want the mRNA, I want genes which are DNA. Don't worry, they can take the mRNA here and they will use an enzyme called the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Think about it. Transcription is from DNA to RNA. So reverse transcription, using the reverse transcriptase enzyme, is RNA back to DNA. So what happens with this enzyme is, this enzyme will put a primer. You don't have to memorize the primer. It's just that small little sequence there. Look at this mRNA sequence here. I'm just going to put the sequence as CUA, CCG, CAAG. Don't memorize the sequence. Now, as the reverse transcriptase enzyme moves along the mRNA sequence, it will not add other RNA nucleotides, but it adds DNA nucleotides to the mRNA sequence. C, G, U, A. Look at the A. It doesn't pair up with the uracil. It pairs up with thymine. So that's a DNA nucleotide like that. So the reverse transcriptase will then produce another DNA sequence. And this is called complementary DNA. So in this case here, when you get the cDNA, which is complementary DNA, it is a single-stranded DNA. Remember, a gene is made up of double-stranded DNA. How do I make it become double-stranded DNA? Very simple. I just use DNA polymerase. And when we use DNA polymerase, it makes the other strand. And in this other strand of DNA, you get the gene. That's where the gene comes from, directly. Okay. And look at this gene. This gene does not have the introns anymore because the original mRNA that you took did not have the introns at all. 
So to solve this problem of not getting a gene with introns, we just get RNAs out, we extract the mRNA out, we use the reverse transcriptase enzyme to produce cDNA or complementary DNA, and we use a D DNA polymerase to make it back into a double-stranded DNA. So in the exam, if you want to explain this, you just have to say, extract the mRNA from the organism, use reverse transcriptase and DNA polymerase to produce the double-stranded DNA again. So you will get your gene. So it's still the same thing, it's still the gene, okay? But this gene over here do not have the introns. So we have solved the problem. So in case we cannot cut the DNA using restriction endonuclease, we extract its mRNA and use reverse transcriptase. In both cases, you will still get the gene that you want. The third way of obtaining genes from an organism is by artificially synthesizing the DNA. Now, imagine as an example, you have want to produce this desired protein. The protein here has methionine, histidine, valine, and phenylalanine as a specific amino acid sequence. I want this protein to be produced by the organism, and I need a gene. I can artificially produce a gene if I wanted to. Using the mRNA table, we know that the specific mRNAs we need are for methionine, AUG. For histidine, I can use uh, a few, like two sequences, but I'm just going to use CAU, which I've highlighted in the table. For valine, I can use a total of four codons, but I'm just going to use one codon, GUU. And for phenylalanine, it's just UUU or UUC, but I'm just using one of that sequence, UUU. Now, to produce that mRNA sequence, we know that the template DNA must be TAC, GTA, CAA, AAA, and ACT because it's complementary. So obviously, the non-template base sequence has to be just the complementary strand to the template, as you can see here. So this is the DNA sequence or the gene which I require to code for that desired protein. Now, using a specific type of technology, you don't have to go into the detail. As you can see here, we can put uh, specific DNA nucleotides in specific chambers. So you have adenine DNA nucleotides, thymine DNA nucleotides, cytosine DNA nucleotides, and guanine DNA nucleotides. And we feed these nucleotides through a DNA synthesizer machine. You don't have to go through this in detail. You just have to know that we have a specific machine that can synthesize DNA or genes for us. And what we can do is we can just type in the sequence that we want. Just tell the DNA synthesizer machine, I want a sequence of TAC, GTA, CAA, AAA, ACT, and automatically the DNA synthesizer machine will use these DNA nucleotides and make the gene that you want. So this is how we can also artificially synthesize DNA or genes. So these are the ways that you can obtain the gene from the organism. The first most common one that they will do is they will use the restriction endonuclease to cut the DNA slightly above the gene and below the gene in this diagram here to obtain it. If you cannot do that or if the gene is full of introns, you allow the organism to first express the genes so that it produces the mRNA without introns. You take that mRNA out, use the reverse transcriptase enzyme to make it back into DNA, which is cDNA, complementary DNA. Use DNA polymerase to make it into a double-stranded DNA. You get the gene there. Or the third easiest way is, if you know the sequence of the gene, you feed the information into a DNA synthesizer machine, and the DNA synthesizer machine will artificially synthesize the gene that you want. So these are the three ways that we can obtain the gene that we want from the organism.